Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Tinker's Construct. Today I'm going to be telling you all there is that I could think of about materials. So, as usual, we're going to start at the beginning. Now, there's a lot of Tier 1 materials, and in fact, I've got more here displayed than what actually constitutes technically Tier 1. So, I've broken these things up into specific groups for ease of access, or at least most likely access of one's progression and their journey. We're starting off with the part builder. Tools and materials that can be carved. They don't need any kind of heat source or anything like that. Things that you can actually put in here and just make it. Then we're going with the heated setup where you need a seared melter and at least a seared heater in order to make some of these things. Now they actually may have some overlap with the previous set, but uh, they may also require at least some sort of pouring mechanic uh, and a molten aspect, but they don't have to have an alloy. Then there's the lava and alloys setup. Things that require at least lava in order to uh, create an alloy or to smelt something into a molten state. And last but not least, we've got Blazing Blood. This is going to be a representative of those that need the highest tier temperatures to make the highest alloys. But before we get into that, let's start at the beginning. Tier 1, at least what I'm calling it for this purposes of this video. Uh, so you've got your standard stuff here for Tier 1, which is like wood, stone, flint or basalt, bone, leather, string, necrotic bones, which are pretty much only found in the nether, and some sort of vanilla vine variant. Yes, you can actually use the, the nether vines as well. These are all your standard tier one carving materials, but there are more that you can actually carve in the part builder uh, than just those ones displayed here. In fact, you can carve chains into bindings. You can also carve different slimy vines, and we've got things like copper, as well as the green heart logs, uh, which are found on trees like this out in the world. Uh, and you, you don't actually make those logs. You, you could carve them straight up into slimy tools without the need of some kind of heater or melter. So let's just demonstrate some of the different things we might have. So wood, what does it do? What good is it? Looking up in your Encyclopedia of Tinkering, which is made from all the books uh, just for my own reference, you can see all of its stats in here, and it's just good for repair, really. That, that's pretty much it. You put it on here, you get a cultivated bonus, and the tool practically grows more material when repairing. So if I were to, say, use 10 of a material to repair a tool from its broken state, in this case, if it had wooden parts on there, it might require less of that material, like 9, 8, or so on, depending upon the different cultivated levels on there. Now let's go with stone. This is pretty much your entry-level stuff. What most people are going to start with is some kind of stone tools, and going with a full stone tool isn't actually a, necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you get stone bound, which uh, it, it mines faster the more it's worn out. So that's kind of a good thing because it's going to wear out relatively quickly. But it does repair with stone and that's relatively everywhere, so it's pretty easy to, to work with. And of course, the more stone bound it is, the faster it is as it uh, its durability lowers. And you do lose a little bit of damage on it, which uh, is going to be a negative for any kind of weapons. Uh, so this is really just going to be used for tools and probably your starting gear. All right, and now we move on to flint. This makes things a little bit more damaging, but a lot less durable. You'll notice that when I lift this out of here, the uh, durability of the pickaxe itself drops considerably. And you don't even need to use flint. You can use basalt if you find some of that. But again, as it's pretty much damage-based, it's not very good for tools. It's more for a weapon. Now, bone items are actually pretty good. They have a fractured option, which if you read here, it's extra sharp due to the broken bits of bone. It more or less just does more damage on there. There's there's not a lot to, to list on that one. The mining speed is going to be pretty poor, so it, again, it's going to be really good for weapons, especially early on if you're able to kill some, some stuff going with a bone sword. This is going to be stronger than an iron sword as far as damage goes, like 6.75 if you make the entire thing out of bone. But as its mining speed and durability are kind of meh, it's not that good for tools. Again, it's more of a weapon item. Necrotic bone, on the other hand, while it's used, for, you're, you're going to need to go into the nether to get that because it, it's made from, dropped from wither skeletons. It can be useful for a little bit of, well, getting a, a bit of, of life steal, but it's a really small amount. Uh, I was finding that it was a random chance of gaining like half a heart 
Um, and it just it's a, a better chance uh, as you gain more levels of it. If you're using something that attacks very fast, then a necrotic bone might be worthwhile. But as for a tool, it's not really that useful. All right, leather. This is actually rather unique, the tanned ability. Tool no longer takes double or more damage from certain actions. So let me make a stone pickaxe with a leather binding. And I have a regular stone pickaxe here. If I use it on this dummy, yes, I get the piercing bonus because it's a pick in general, but you'll notice that I'm losing a lot of durability on that. I'm at 96, I hit it once, and it goes down to 94. It's taking double the durability damage because of the tool and its use and, and how sometimes it doesn't work. Now, if I use the leather bound pickaxe here, it only takes one damage anymore. This is just an example and uh, showing you how it can be useful if you've got tools that you want to use for non-standard means. Because each tool can be used as a weapon, and each weapon uh, might have potential to be used as a tool. It should also be mentioned that leather is only good for binding. Same thing with string and vines. They're only going to be uh, good for bindings. You can't use them as part of the main tool, which kind of does make sense when you think about it. So string, you add that in there, and it becomes stringy like cheese, but less tasty. Uh, what, it, what it allows you to do is repair the tool with string. I can add string and I can repair it instead of using stone. Now if I have stone, I can still repair it with that as well, and in fact it repairs better. I mean, it's string might be a lot easier to come by than uh, replenishing your uh, manilin supply. Vines, and by vines we're talking about any of the vanilla variants. We've got your weeping vines, your twisting vines, or your regular Minecraft vines. This is actually one of the best things you can put on one of your tools that you use in the overworld. For a pick, it's probably not the best choice because you're not going to be in the sunshine. But if you are out in the world and it is daytime, you are solar powered, which gives it a very strong unbreaking uh, ability. So if I use this, you notice it didn't take damage. It still didn't. Oh, there it goes. It finally took one. So you do have to have access to the sky. It has to be daytime. Your tools can really last a lot longer with a little bit of vines. All right, now we're getting into the non-standard stuff, and that is something like a chain. Now, I'm not actually going to use a chain. I'm going to use a chain tool binding because you can carve this in a part builder simply by taking some chains, putting it in there, and carving it like so. Now, putting this on here works for a lot more tools and weapons more broadly if it can accept a binding. This Obviously, not all tools can accept it, like a Matic. Yeah, Matics don't accept bindings because it's a double-headed tool. It doesn't even have those. But if you put this on a pick, it kind of gives you like a, a level one of unbreaking in a way. It gives you like a 15 to 20% chance of not taking any durability loss. I could put this down here, and we were at 88. And we're at 85. You see that was only three loss of durability for that one. All right, let's talk about copper because you could easily smelt this in a furnace, just a regular furnace. You don't even need the, the heater. And you can carve it into a pickaxe head, for example, and give it the dwarven trait. Besides it being a lot more durable than your other entry level, like stone tools or things of that nature, uh, it also adds in this ability, which it will mine faster the deeper you go. And that just means at lower Y levels. You can also add in a tool handle as well and give it a Dwarven 2, which means that it's going to mine even faster. And it already has a really good mining speed with that on it by itself. So if you come across any of these uh, slimy trees out in the world, you could use the heartwood to make tool parts. So while the slime wood tool parts, they have a, a higher durability, but they do come with some negatives uh, on there. I mean, if you look at the handle here, it has some drawbacks for damage and speed and so on, but the durability is a nice boost. It does come with a really nice effect, and that's where if you put on something like a tool binding, it won't affect it as much because none of the stats are affected. You just gain special abilities. And with this, you gain Overslime and Overgrowth. Overslime is an extra durability that can be added to the tool that is not repaired with the primary material, uh, like in this case, a copper pickaxe. It would not use copper, at least not for the 50 Overslime that is on there. So you effectively have 178 durability of copper and 50 durability of Overslime or in this case, slime crystals, and each slime crystal can repair a different amount. I'll get into that in a moment, but let's go into the other ability it gained, overgrowth. 
this will slowly regain over slime over time and the more it has the more of that uh, or the faster the over slime will regrow on the tool this kind of gives it like an auto repair function uh, but it has a limited durability of only 50 in this case by adding in more parts it increases that overgrowth further and your over slime will regrow uh, much quicker but it does not increase your over slime amount in this case it stays at the default 50. you'll need to have it on your person uh, whether it be in your own personal inventory or otherwise and you start noticing that the over slime is now suddenly starting to increase as it wasn't before so if i put this back in here though let's say that i, I run through the over slime that's on the pick i can then put a slime crystal of a different amount and start increasing the repair on that and just quickly speed it up now how wh what do i make slime crystals with you just you just cook slime balls and in this case i've got a slime crystal uh, from a sky slime and that increases a lot more of the repair and then there's an ender slime crystal which repairs an even further amount and it just gives you an idea of how this can also be repaired at least for that over slime amount as well as have its own auto regenerative feature now let's cover the other slimy variants now of course a slimy vine from uh probably the underside of one of those floating sky islands which is going to be a little challenging to try and get but if you use it you can turn it into a tool binding put that on there and you gain the uh, airborne ability this allows you to mine things without kind of penalty if you're in the air and by in the air i mean think of you're on a ladder uh, that usually is the best example you know you're holding sneak and and mining something while you're on a ladder or climbing on a vine or something this will prevent you from having any slowdown on that you still will get a penalty for mining underwater though also with the blue sky slime slimy vine you get the overcast ability which it says over slime can be made extra thick on this tool which if you look your over slime amount is up from 50 to 112. you're going to want to be aware that you're going to have to repair this with slime crystals or at least that durability meter if not the tool itself now this last one is only obtainable through the end but it is still a carvable material so i will briefly cover it and that is ender porting putting this on your tool you then gain the ability whether it be a tool or a weapon to teleport to what it is that you kill or mine in this case i've got a block over here and i am now teleporting to it so yeah something that could be interesting um we'll, we'll see how it goes but uh, yeah just be aware of that one that completes the first carvable group let's get into the molten group or, or the more accurately the pourable group now yes there is a slime for slime wood copper of course you can also pour things into a cast but this allows you things like iron scorched brick seared stone and you could feasibly also do some blood bones but that that's going to be a little bit more challenging without a uh, smeltery all right so let's cover iron in previous versions of tinker's construct this gave you a magnetic ability that is no longer that's something completely different in this case you add that on there you gain the sturdy effect if you add on a binding this is usually a good way of just seeing what will change in all the other examples you will not gain durability from adding these in uh, but in this case due to the sturdy effect it increases the durability of the tool so you just get a straight up 10 extra durability in this case uh, it might vary depending upon the tool that you're using and if it actually uses some kind of binding but just because it's got a sturdy it will have an increased durability now getting into the seared items they're actually a little bit better it's more a damaging item so you'll probably want this more on a weapon than you would want on a tool because the durability drops uh, the attack speed and mining speed are, are relatively uh, normal but just by adding this on there you gain the searing ability tool does bonus damage in hot areas but less damage in cold ones so let's take this pick i have just added that on there and is now searing so other stats on this have not changed if i use a regular stone pick i'm doing 1.6 plus one piercing now if i use this one i'm doing 1.41 and one why because i'm actually in a colder biome being in the nether it makes a big difference i'm doing 1.99 and one piercing damage this is an unarmored target and now if i use the searing tool it does 4.49 and one next let's cover scorched this one here is similar to the searing one where it doesn't do 
as good for just regular tool use, but it is really good for uh, battle or damage because it will increase the attack damage and the attack speed in this case. Uh, and just adding on the binding, which doesn't add any extra stats or anything like that, just adds the ability on there. You can see it then adds Scorching, which does bonus damage to targets that are on fire. So let's head over to this target dummy, and using this, it does 1.59 and 1 damage. So if I set this on fire, and then do it, I'm doing 2.4 and 1. Now that may not sound like much, because a lot of the time uh, your targets probably won't be on fire, especially if you're using some kind of melee weapon, but there are definitely different upgrades and abilities that can lend itself to making that a lot more interesting. And then you've got Blood Bones. These are, well, more along the lines for a smeltery, because you'd need to have melted blood, and usually people just stand in a smeltery to get blood. But if you've gone to the nether, you could feasibly get some of the uh, blood slime from some of those slime islands, melt that down in your uh, heater, and pour it over a bone. So it, it, it works for either one. But then you can use those to pour and make your different kinds of parts for your tools as you desire. Now in this case, I've just got a tool binding. We're going to put this on here. The stats will not change on this regular stone pickaxe otherwise, but it does give you raging and it does more damage when the holder's health is low. Now if you press sneak while hovering over this, you'll see that it actually tells you exactly how much, plus four damage at low health. Now low health varies as you progress downwards through your health. You can see that I've had different stats with different health amounts in each of these cases. And because of that, it's also much better for a combat type use in most cases. I mean, heck, it, it's based around doing more damage, and therefore the less durability, a little bit more damage, and a little bit more speed on there makes it good for weapons almost exclusively. That pretty much covers the heater category, and we're going to move into the lava category, something that you need to either have molten access to, a smeltery, or at least up, uh, some kind of alloy up to 1000 degrees. Now in this case, we're actually going to start with Cobalt. So with Cobalt, uh, just adding that to it, it actually increases stats, which it says no stats on there. It just increases the existing ones is what happens. So by adding this on here, you can see the attack speed goes up and the mining speed goes up. This is primarily a speedy increase to just about any tool or weapon for that matter by adding the lightweight ability. And of course, the more levels of lightweight, the more uh, speed that it adds in, in general. Now this is also a pretty good just all around material because it has an increase in durability, uh, speed on both attack and mining, so it could be very useful for increasing your harvesting yields as well as just increasing the uh, rate that you can attack enemies with. And it's also rather durable as well as far as uh, materials go. Speaking about durability, let's go over this one, Rose Gold. Rose gold is made with a combination of copper and gold. It adds in the enhanced ability, which by putting this on here, it increases the number of upgrades, which to some could be very, very key. And this will increase for each different part that you add. And you can see by if I were to add a handle as well, it goes up to enhanced two and the upgrades go up to a fifth slot. Now I was of course adding in a handle, but you'll probably notice the durability drops and this is actually a uh, enhanced alloy, but it uh, its durability is really pathetic. But at an offset, its attack speed and mining speed are really incredible and often desirable for many people. So it's got some really good pluses with one big minus. So this, again, is going to be useful for both weapons and tools because of these different stats on there. You just got to be aware if you're using it for something that's for heavy duty mining, the big durability cut that's going to be in this material. All right, let's talk about Tinker's Bronze. This stuff is pretty good. It, it's just a general use item, and it's not too difficult to make with uh, just a mixture of copper and glass, but it has a maintained ability, and it basically is kind of the re reverse of a stone tool where it mines faster at higher durability. If you choose to combine this with some kind of over slime ability, you could potentially have a much faster mining tool than you might normally because of that high durability that it would maintain. 
as its stats are just generally pretty good. It's got a higher mining speed, a good durability, and it mines better when it's uh, maintained, so it's really good for tools. Not the best for damage uh, weapons and stuff, but it can just be a good all-around material in general. And of course, the classic, pig iron. Pig iron is made with a combination of some kind of molten clay, blood, and molten iron. By adding this on there, you gain the tasty bonus, which just in general doesn't really change any of the stats for the tool itself. But in a general sense, it's really good for a durability, decent at attack damage, and uh, normal for speed, but it, it's, its mining speed is not the best. So it's better for a weapon in general, but it could be used for a... Uh, a mining tool in a pinch. Now, if I were to take this tool here, and you can see that I'm currently hungry, if I just right click with it, I start eating it a little bit at a time. And by adding this in here and upgrading it further with more tool parts, giving it a higher tasty bonus, it becomes even better to eat. It refills more hunger on my bar at a time. Each time, uh, each tasty bonus gives you about a half a, a hunger uh, each time that you upgrade it. So this is giving like one and a half hunger and a little bit of saturation at the same time, just at the cost of durability of the tool. All right, and with this, we've got slime steel, which actually is an alloy made with seared stone, sky slime, and molten iron. This is very different, uh, but also the same as the slimy vines. So using it with a binding, you might as well be using those uh, vines. But you can also add in things like tool handles or whatever, filling out the rest of the parts. It, because it does add that overcast ability, which means that it's going to have even more overslime than a normal amount. And of course, it adds the overslime ability. But if you look at the stats on it, it's actually really good. Not the best for any kind of weapon per se, but it does have a really good durability bonus. So it could be very welcome for different tool parts by adding that on there. Now this next one is Nahuatl planks, uh, or just Nahuatl in general, can make some really interesting tools. Uh, you need to make molten obsidian or melt some down and pour it over some kind of wooden plank. Then by adding it to your tool or weapon, you gain a lacerating ability, which it causes the target to bleed, dealing more damage. So in general, it's not the best for mining because the uh, durability goes down, but also the attack speed goes down, though it does add that damage over time. Uh, it also increases attack damage by a considerable amount, so it can be very good for just big hit and run away type scenarios. So by using this on this dummy, you can see that it's currently doing a little bit of bleeding, not for too long, and it is reduced by armor in this case. As we do it here, you can start seeing it's doing like a half a heart of damage with a few ticks in general. By upping the number of parts that have this ability on it, you're going to increase the damage that it does and the damage over time, which can be really, really good. Not to mention that this is just a regular Nahuatl pickaxe, and I'm doing five points of damage on this without any other uh, tool parts or additional upgrades or abilities. Keep in mind, it is a chance for a bleed. It is not a guaranteed one. All right, and here we get into the final category that I have, and that's those that are made primarily uh, through alloying with blaze blood, or blazing blood as it might be called. So let's talk about queen slime. This is an alloy made from magma cream, molten gold, and molten cobalt. Magma cream can be received from magma cubes, of course, but you can also melt down magma blocks or magma cream uh, themselves into this liquid form. And by adding on just uh, one of these little binding bits here, you can see that it, it grants over slime a little bit more than usual. So you've got 60 instead of 50, but it also adds overlord. And to help with a little bit of uh, just the stats on this one, it reduces the durability by 15% per level of the overlord level. And 66% of that, it goes towards the overslime. So in this case, it reduced the durability of the pickaxe. You can see this going down and I'm just adding on a, a binding, which normally does not affect stats at all. It just affects those that are currently existing. So it reduced the durability and increased the overslime. Now as a general tool part, the attack damage is slightly reduced, the attack speed is slightly reduced, the mining speed is slightly reduced, but the durability is phenomenal. It really shines with that. And with the minimal slight reductions on there, 
plus that uh, queen slime ability just by having something with a really high durability and adding it on there can make a really big difference especially if it's a tool made with a higher uh you know rating or bigger part adding that on there you get a bigger over slime pool to work with because it also increases the durability and the number of parts are definitely going to increase that so let's talk about blazing bone as we have access to blazing blood why not grab a necrotic bone that you got from killing some wither skeletons and use it as such so the durability is reduced but it's more a weapon so that's not as big of a concern the attack damage stays the same but don't worry we're going to get to that the attack speed increases which is good so you're going to be hitting faster more often and even the mining speed is going to be good but in this case it adds in a 15 percent max damage while you are on fire so if you have something like potion of resistance and you use this you can do more damage with this thing than you normally would all right let's talk about hepatazon this is one of the newer uh, alloys that we currently have that adds in a momentum option so the more blocks you mine in a row without stopping the faster you will have you will go it's sort of like a locomotion type thing as in general it's much better for tools as the durability is increased the mining speed is increased and the attack damage and speed are either reduced or just kind of meh but uh, in this case just adding this on here and using this to mine blocks as i mine more and more without stopping it will just increase the speed at which i am then mining stuff going faster and faster as time progresses all right and we're at the end here with manilin this adds in the insatiable ability and it does not change any of the stats by increasing or decreasing it's a combat option which you deal more and more damage every time you hit an enemy so if you aren't going for the big hit and you have a lot of stabs you want to do like with a dagger or just a really quick attacking weapon then this is definitely going to be the the tool for you now looking at it the durability is an increase it's a rather durable material the attack damage is incredible so it already has a really big bonus it's really made for some high damaging weapons the attack speed and mining speed are both kind of not really to to write home about but a, at least they're not too bad now first attack on this dummy I'm doing one piercing and two damage now I'm doing one piercing 2.24 damage and so on and you can see that it just keeps going up it will cap out at a certain point but you can see that you can get some really big numbers this is especially effective against bosses because you're going to be fighting them and hitting them quite often there you have it a brief overview on a lot of the different materials that there currently are in this version of tinker's construct there may be changes in the future so keep an eye out for that but uh, also i'm going to be doing more with the abilities modifiers and more in future videos so if you enjoyed this please be sure to give a like comment subscribe and until next time i'll see you